Lisa. I want to share a few of my knitting projects with you, bring you up to date on where I am. It's been a couple of months since I did a knitting video, and when I last showed you this yarn and this project, I had about, oh, maybe this much done on the back of a sweater. I discovered, not too much further along, that I had made a mistake in calculating my figuring from my going from my gauge to how many stitches I needed. Just a simple mathematical mistake and those are to me the most frustrating. It's hard to know when you're knitting how a fabric is going to lay uh, on you, how truly how the all over fit might be, whether a pattern is really going to work for you and your your body type and everything. I mean there's a lot that goes into that. But simple math, I should be able to do simple math, but I didn't do it correctly. And I had, if I had completed the back and then made the front the same, I would have had a sweater that would have been five inches too large going around. So that wasn't going to work. So I, I made, tried one modification, that didn't work. So I ended up pulling all of that out and starting over. And this is the sweater that I ended up with. And this is the back has a little keyhole neckline in the back. At the top it has a rolled neckline. And at the bottom it has the same pattern that I was sharing before, except this time what I did, uh, I went all in this time. Um, instead of doing the back and the front separate, I did this in the round. So that meant that I really, really had to have the gauge correct. Um, and fortunately I did. I did pattern sections, stockinette st section, pattern section, so that there are four of them. There's a pattern section on front and back and on each side, and then there's stockinette section on um, each side of the front and each side of the back where I did my decreasing and increasing as needed uh, to make this sweater fit. I was originally going to do it sort of a boxy shape and that kind of went out the window when I made it just way too big. I decided when I started over I would do it more fitted. So that's what I've ended up with and I did a rolled uh, hem at the bottom as well. So it's a cute little summer sweater. It just took a lot more time than I was uh, planning to take. This is by Yarn and I will put the name um, and color and everything on the screen so you'll know uh, what I used for it. I really enjoy working with that yarn. It is 100% wool and I was a little bit afraid to make this as a summer top because I wasn't planning to wear anything underneath it. It probably could be worn with a uh, sweater underneath it for uh, winter time but it's, it's pretty fitted. I'm surprised though that this does not itch. I'm, I've worn it twice now and I have felt very comfortable wearing it. So um, it's, it's really, really great yarn. And you're going to see some more of that yarn coming up here soon. The project that I'm now working on is a vest for winter. So we've gone from summer to winter. This yarn is Malabrigo and Rios yarn and I will put the color on the the screen as to which color it is. Now the color, in fact it's, it's probably on this little name thing, but rather, rather than pull that out I'll just put it on the screen. Now the way these colors work, they list these without, as they say, no dye lot. Because, meaning that they're going to vary a lot. And this one is much lighter and this one is much darker. They're the same color bought at the same time from the same uh, store and same lot. So they really should have been very, very similar, but they're different. And I had four balls and they're, two of them are kind of light and two of them are kind of dark. And what I'm doing is just alternating as I go. Also in this case, I'm going all the way around, but because it's a vest, it's going to be open. So this is the front. Here's the front of the vest and then this goes all the way around the back and I've got it on 32 inch needles so it's um, pushed up a little bit here but I have spread it out on larger needles to know that I have my gauge and things accurate with it. I will put the pattern name on the screen. It's from Treasury of Knitting Stitches Volume 2 and it's a chevron with seed stitch in it and you see one complete pattern here and then I'm about halfway through the next pattern. There's only going to be two of these pattern repeats. They, they're designed to go around the waistline because it pulls up the yarn a little bit when you do this, this pattern repeat. You don't, you don't have quite as wide a gauge working with these as I did with the stockinette and then I'll just pick back up in stockinette when I finish this repeat and continue on to the armholes and then do the front and the back. The um, ribbing is called Miss Stitch Ribbing and it is also from uh, one of the Treasury of Knitting Pattern books. I think it was from the, the first one um, and again I'll put that information on the screen. 
and it's a two by two ribbing, but the way you work it, instead of if you're cast, instead of casting on in multiples of four, you cast on in multiples of four plus three, and you do your knit two, purl two, and what that ends up being is that you have your your one stitch off every other row, so you end up with some knitted rows or some going up and some pearl ones and then in between you have kind of a seed stitch and it creates a rib that's not super stretchy but it's a really neat looking rib and I think it looks good with this particular pattern. So I just combined some patterns doing seed stitch on the edge. I'm going to have a zipper up the front of this. I have not bought my zipper yet. I think I'm probably going to have to mail order that. Um, but I'm going to have gobs of colors to work with. These are some gorgeous, gorgeous colors here and I wear a lot of solid long sleeve tees in the winter so that's what I want this uh, to to go with and I have worked with this yarn before and it just feels so wonderful on and it knits up beautifully but you do have to alternate your colors and because I'm finishing each row at the, in the very center of the front I'm doing my switching off here at what would be like the side hem so I'm alternating between uh, balls every couple of rows I do out of one color and another couple of rows out of another color I'm just about done with one of these and as I keep saying colors are not colors they're just different balls of yarn of the same color but they come out a, with a little bit more brighter colors in some places and duller colors in others and, and it'll all blend together as long as you do that alternating. So that's uh, the project that's in process right now. The next thing coming down the road is more of the Ba yarn, which I just love. It's this one. Cover up the price here. Well, I think that's the standard price is, is $30, but this is um, just the most gorgeous stuff. This is their August colorway. They have some regular colorways and then they have these monthly colorways. This is also one of those where they vary a lot from one um, spool to the next or they can vary a lot. This, this took two spools and I can't tell the difference from one to another. I can't tell where I start, started one and stopped another. It was it blended very very well. When I was picking these out she had several from, that were from this August 18 uh, colorway and some were a lot lighter, some were darker. I tried to pick two that I looked that I thought were pretty similar. I'm not sure that I'm going to really alternate rows or anything. I don't think I need to. What I'm going to do with this is a long scarf that I can tie different ways around my neck. I don't want the asymmetrical. I don't want a shawl. I want a true scarf. And um, so I've got to work out a pattern for that. I want something pretty open weave. I want it to be fairly lightweight. Um, and I could have almost done it with one, but I decided I, I just knew that I would would be unhappy with it if I didn't have it long enough. So I went ahead and got two of these gorgeous, gorgeous colors. And um, if I have leftovers, I bet there's somebody in my knitting group that would like to have it because everybody, I think, has coveted this yarn. I was thrilled when I went back to the store this week and she still had some. So that's what's coming up next. And the last thing that I want to share, and you've seen this sweater before, nothing new here, seen the sweater. But one of the things I commented on when I shared this sweater before is that it's made out of a hemp and cotton mix and the color bleeds really badly. I mean, just blocking it, just putting it in water, laying it out on paper towels, blue thread came out, or not paper towels, on, on regular towels, blue thread or blue color leached into my paper into my uh, towels. So I set the dye. And I've worn it a couple of times, but I was always a little worried to wear it. What if it rained? I mean, it was that bad. So um, I love the color, but I wanted to preserve that color. So I used this product. I've used it with fabric, and it works really well. And I tried it with the yarn, and I think it has worked. Uh, this is RIT Dye Fixative. You put a certain quantity of this in warm or rather hot water, and you put your garment in to soak for 20 minutes, stirring it every little bit. And then you take it out and you wash it. And there was a fair amount of blue dye in there with the fixative that had leached out but when I washed it I got some bleeding in the wash and then when I rinsed as I kept rinsing I didn't get any more blue and when I laid it out on towels I didn't get any more blue so I think it's a vast improvement to what it was so I think I finally got the color set at least I feel comfortable now wearing it when it rains and it's been a very rainy uh, year so far this year so I'm probably going to need this sweater fixed up I might even wear it tomorrow I'm going to a quilt show so um, those are projects that I have either completed or in process and coming up. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you'll take a look at some of my other videos.